Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. In this one, we are going to be looking at a villager trading hall design, which, unlike the other ones you'll find, is fast, does not involve water, and never gets clogged up with villagers. Pretty cool if you ask me. Let's go take a look. And here we have the villager trading hall in all of its glory. It may not look like much, it actually may look like a lot of work for something as simple as a trading hall, but... It, trust me, this is a lot better than a lot of the ones I've seen, and um, th credit where credit is due, because I did not come up with this design. This was sent to me by a very wonderful person by the name of Grifter Mage, and they um, they have modified a design from Calman, and I'll link that in the description. So make sure you guys check them out. It's a great it's a great design. It's really smart, and. Uh, I, th I think it deserves credit and what I'm doing is I'm just basically doing a showcase and tutorial of something that somebody else built and gave me permission to do a tutorial on so uh, if we go in here I'll show you how it all works and uh, there's a lot of redstone for it but trust me this is definitely worth it uh, but what you what you want to do to get this activated is you want to put down your villager and then oh, you how why do you just ju dance, dancing on the right okay forget that um we're going to place down the mine villager and then the mine cart, and they're going to go down here, land on this weighted, well not weighted, but this um, this detector rail, and then it's going to go up through the red, the redstone line, push this block out, push this rail out, push that cauldron out, which yeah, that, that triggers this line right here. And now what happens is when you send in another villager, which this guy so rudely decided to step into the spot, when you place down another villager, it will roll all the way down to the second one, and then it will block up the third one, and well, the second one. And then I'll place down another villager, another minecart. It'll go down, get sucked down there. That will go out, then that will go out. And as you can see, this is a perfectly working system. So let's crack on with the tutorial. Since this is a completely modular design, for every villager holding chamber that you want, you are going to need 22 building blocks, 2 slabs, 1 trap door, 3 sticky pistons, 1 soul sand, 1 cauldron, 3 powered rails, 1 detector rail, one comparator, ten redstone torches, two repeaters, and red one redstone dust, along with some extra rails, buckets, and bottles that'll help you along the way. So you're going to want to get things started with an area that is eight blocks long, ten blocks tall, and you can make it as wide as you want within reason, of course, uh, basically to suit your needs. And uh, you're going to want to start with a little upside down T line going down as far as you are going to be building your villager trading hall remember that each block line is going to be a villager holding cell that's what you have to remember because they're going to be side by side now what you're going to want to do is place in redstone repeaters on the bo uh, the blocks that are facing away from the front of it the front is where you access the villagers you're going to face them that way and they're all going to be on one tick like that that is perfect then you're going to want to just put blocks on top of them like that now we're going to get into the rail part which is very frustrating and really irritating if you do it wrong uh, if you are building your rails east to west like this this is oh never mind north to south if you are building them north to south like if the rails are going down north to south like that it's going to be a little bit harder than if you are building them east to west trust me on this if I go over here and build them east to west uh, as you can see all I have to do I place a power rail there detect a rail there power rail there and I basically continue this pattern on all the way and you see how easy that is or that may seem difficult depending on what you think but if I come over here if I want to place the rails north to south what I have to do is I have to put a powered rail there detect a rail there powered rail there then I have to place another one there break no I leave that one on then I put a powered rail there detect a rail there break that power rail put another powered rail down there and then I want to break this powered rail put one there and then if I wanted to do it again, which you probably will have to do it more than two times, you put down a power rail there, detect a rail up that, break that power rail, put one down there, break that one and that one, and place them on... Well, I shouldn't have broke that one, but yeah, make sure that... It's kind of like threading, so you have to make sure that you're threading it and leaving this one with the ones on both sides. So, Because if I didn't, and I placed this power rail here, those two would join up and it would screw up the entire design. So I'm just going to finish placing down the powered rails and detector rails like this and uh, see that that's this is what happens this is what happens see okay make sure you don't mess up the way I just did because that trust me that's not a that's not a very good idea I'm gonna continue placing these in and um, hopefully you guys can do it more efficiently than I am doing it here 
Now that you have all your rails in, you can take out the scaffolding blocks, and of course you have to leave these ones on, otherwise the, otherwise the rails would pop off. Now what you're going to want to do, you're, we're going to do a little bit of the back redstone. So you're going to want to place blocks on the fronts of each of these repeaters. Then you're going to want to do redstone torches along that line. And then you're going to want to put blocks on top of those torches. And then after that, you're going to run torches on the opposite side of that so they turn off like that. I'll just give you a side view of that right there. Then what you're going to want to do, place more blocks on top of these torches. So then you can do some more side torches like that. And then after that, you're going to do blocks on top of those torches. And then you're going to do redstone torches on the side and top of these blocks right here. Just to make sure that um, we can spread the redstone signal throughout the build. As you can see right there, that is how it's supposed to look. Just to, You can pause the video here if you need to slow it down or take a look. But when you're done with that, now you're going to want to place block up there and a block up there like that. So it's a wall of two high. You're going to put redstone torches all along that line. Not there. There. Then you're going to place blocks on top of these torches. And... Then you're going to put blocks on top of these torches here so they form like a little ditch there. Um, what you're going to want to do now is you're going to want to put torches on the back side here and then blocks on the top of these torches over like this. And when that is done, you're just going to put torches on the top face, put some blocks here, and then one run redstone repeaters on full delay along uh, right next to these torches like that. And now it is time to put in some more rails, which is always fun. So to do this, of course, you're going to have to take apart some of the stuff that I put together. Of course, this is only for if you are running them north to south. So what you're going to make sure you do, you got to break these torches, unfortunately. Just remember, oh, I'm breaking blocks all over the place, aren't I? Let's fix that real quick. Uh, you're going to want to fill these in with scaffolding blocks. I'm just going to use stone slabs so I know which ones to break because you do not want to break the rest of the redstone builds. And you're also going to want to place some scaffolding blocks on that side. Now what you're going to want to do, this is only for people that are facing, that the rails are facing east and west. You're going to want to place a power rail there. And you want to basically run power rails like that where they're all facing this way. Or, yeah, out like that. But if I do that, they connect, of course. So we're going to do this. Make it three wide. Put one there. Break those two. Three wide again. Make it one there. Increase that. Put one there. Break those two. Expand it on both sides. Put another one down. Put the edges on both sides, put one down, and then you can break those, and you are pretty much done. So you can break, well, done with the rails at least. You can break all your scaffolding blocks, put your torches back here, and then you can put the blocks back on top like that. Once your rails are put in over there, what you're going to want to do is right here, where these torches are, on top of them, you're going to put sticky pistons facing out, and then soul sand on their faces. Once you're done with that, you're going to put blocks on top of these redstone torches back here, like so, and then put redstone torches on their face like that. Then you're going to put blocks on top of those redstone torches, and then redstone torches on those blocks on the side facing out. Then you're going to want to put sticky pistons on those redstone faces, redstone torch faces, and then cauldrons on the piston faces. Once you're done with that, you're going to go out like that, so that it is one block away from the cauldron, and you're going to want to do a line of those all the way down like that. Build a block up like that and a block down like that. And build these all the way out like so. And then, once you're done with that, I... Once you have done all that, you're going to want to place redstone dust in the middle of those two blocks right there. With redstone comparators facing out from these cauldrons here. Of course, when that is done, you're going to go over here and place sticky pistons in this little gap here that is parallel to this row of um, this row of repeaters and torches right there. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to place slabs a block below like that so you can place powered rails right there so that when those powered rails are pushed out they will meet with the soul sand and they'll basically continue the chain where the villager will consecutively drop one and another one another one another one if that makes any sense. And you're going to lastly you're going to want to go down here you're going to want to build up one, two, three blocks and put a slab on top of that. Break those blocks, you place the slabs all the way down. And then you're going to want to place iron trap doors all along the inside of those slabs facing the side here. When you're done with that, you're going to want to place building blocks like so underneath the pistons. So then, I was not prepared, you can put buttons on the bottom parts of these blocks right here. And that is pretty much the entire system done, except for a few things like filling up the cauldron and putting in a few other redstone torches. 
Next, what you're going to want to do is fill up all these cauldrons, only, but only one full, so that it does not tr constantly trigger the other ones. So what you're going to do, I recommend filling them all up first, so then you can go. And of course, this is a lot harder in survival than it is in creative. But you have to take two sips from each of the cauldrons, like so. If you take three, there's none left. If you take only one, then it corrupts the two cells next to it and breaks the system. So make sure that you have exactly two drinks taken, one drink left, from all of the cauldrons here. After that has been done, you're going to want to make your input feed, so like where your villagers are coming from, and you're going to start off with a with your building blocks and some soul sand, and what you're going to do is this is where they're going to feed into. So you're going to take soul sand, and it has to be at least two blocks like that, and then you can run the rest of whatever block you want to use like that. And as you can see here, that is, oh yeah, I forgot about that, and now I'm going to have to go in here and grab a rail. But when we do that, you will see that uh, this is basically what happens is the minecart's going to slide across here really fast, but then we don't want it to go really fast because it will, it will slide off the cart, I mean off the track, and hit this second one. We don't want that. We want it to hit the first one. So what this soul sand does is it slows it down enough for it to land right there. And uh, one more thing you want to do real quick, or you want to grab some of your building blocks. And this is just the bare bones of the build, but I'm pretty sure um, you're going to want a little walkway and stuff to, you know, trade with the villagers. And this is where you can do it right here. Uh, this is basically, it, you can build whatever you want past this, because it won't affect any redstone, because all the redstone is on this side of the build. Uh, and I do have one more thing to show you before we are done, so let me do a little bit of prep work before I do that. If your villager hall is any longer than seven blocks, you are going to need to take a little bit of precaution because, or just depending on where you have your power swords. If your power swords is here, then any longer than eight blocks. But what you're going to need to do is where your power runs out. So for me, it was here, but for you, it could be on this block. You're going to need to make sure that it stays powered because then the villagers are going to get stuck and clogged up and all that nasty stuff. So what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to put two blocks up like that at the point where it runs out of power and put a redstone torch there and that should take care of you for you know until this can unpower so uh, just make sure that you throw one of these down every time that the lines run out of power if it's that long and you should be set and lastly you are going to need need to have a disposal method for killing these villagers off when they're not the ones that you want and to do that basically when you hit this button you know that minecart's gonna fall down and it's gonna land right here unless you have some other method to uh, destroy them or do any of that so uh, what I'm going to do in my case here I'm gonna go one block below the platform that we made uh, and I'm just going to basically run a powered rail line all the way down here and if it's not powered rails in uh, the villagers could get stuck if the chunk is unloading so just make sure that you are aware of the chunk unloading issues so that that's going to work for my needs and well, yeah I forgot about one thing what you're going to want to do is um, you want to you're going to want to make sure that these rails are always powered uh, so that the villagers don't get stuck so I'm just gonna grab a lever and I'm basically just going to go like this and coat these all in levers like so there is another method for doing this you can just use redstone blocks on the bottom of that but I'm pretty sure most of you that have gotten this far do not want to redo this if you are doing this east to west because that's just a recipe for disaster but okay and it looks like we are finally done with this villager trading all so if you found this video helpful or want to give some constructive criticism feel free to leave a comment below in you know the comment box which is below if you like the video please give it a like and if you disliked it you can hit that dislike button if you want to be negative but if you really liked it feel free to subscribe or check out other series series that are on my channel for example titancraft which is an smb server on tango's patreon server and we're having a lot of fun there building a cool base we in fact we just built this there so i really wanted to do a tutorial on it and spread the word because other ones are not optimal but yes uh, that is going to be it for me today, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode.